Time signature is an important aspect of music and without the proper knowledge of time signatures, things like following rhythms and beats are going to be very difficult for you. Today, let's demystify time signatures. Welcome to my channel. So today's topic is about time signatures and let's look at what time signature really is. you picked up a piece of music and you saw something like this or you saw something like this or you saw something like this these are time signatures right so when you pick up a piece of music, the first thing you see is the clef, the next thing is the key signature, and we've talked about this extensively in our previous videos, and after that is the time signature. So I'll show you a quick format of what it looks like. This is the clef. And then the key signature, for example, one flat, which is on F major, and one flat is written on B, and then the time signature. Okay, so I'm very sure you're familiar with things like this. This is the stave, the treble stave, the clef, the key signature, and the time signature. So let's look at what this time signature really entail. So the time signature looks like a fraction, something like this, like I said. Looks like a fraction like this on the stave, 2 over 4, but in the real sense, it's not a fraction. It's just simply saying the number of bits in a bar. That's what this means. The number of bits in a bar. What are the keywords here? Number of bits and bar. What is a bar? Okay. This is a bar. Very simple. This is a bar. On a piece of music, a bar is a region bounded by bar lines. And these are the bar lines. Bar lines. So this shaded portion is a bar, right? Some people call it measures. Yeah, it's also a bar. So we want to know the number of bits in a particular bar. This number on top that in itself looks like a numerator of a fraction is the number of bits in the bar. I know we've said that it represents the number of bits in the bar, but we want to know what bits are in that bar. We know that this is the number, what, but then what bits? So first of all, before we talk about this, let's talk about something on the notes. We call them value. Values of the notes. In the previous video, we talked about beat, rest, notes, and their symbols, right? This, we want to talk about the values of that, of those notes, the values of those notes. Okay, so project is 1 over 4. In case you don't know what DS quiver means, it's demi semi quiver. If you watched the previous video, you should know this. This is semi quiver, demi semi quiver, hemi demi semi quiver. And the value for project is. The value for project is 1 over 4. The value for minimum is 1 over 2. And the value for semi brief is 1. The, va the value for quiver is 1 over 8. The value for semi quiver is 1 over 16, 1 over 32, and this is 1 over 64. Now don't mix this up with beats, right? The beats, be reminded again that for project is 1. Project has 1 bit, but its value is 1 over 4. And minimum has 2 bits, semi brief has 4, and this has half, 
1 over 4, 1 over 8, and 1 over 16. Now these two things are different. And this is where time signature really plays out. Okay? Now, check out this fraction. 2, 4, 8, 16. This denominator in this fraction, this is a fraction, right? The denominators of this fraction for the values of this note represent what would have been called the denominator of the time signature but really is not the denominator of the time signature because the time signature is not a fraction. So if I have a time signature like this, 2, 4, like I was saying before, the denominator of the note, of the value of the note, the denominator of the value of the note, which in this case is 4, represents the supposed denominator of the time signature. So in this case, I'll say 2 crochet beats in a bar. And that's what this means. Two crochet beats in a bar. What if you have three, four? Three crochet beats in a bar. It means that, this simply means that in a bar, and I said before, a bar is a region bounded by bar lines according to the time signature. These bar lines are drawn according to the time signature. It means that the whole stave is barred according to the time signature such that in a single bar you cannot have more than three crochet beats if this is the time signature and if it was two four you cannot have more than two crochet beats in the bar and that beats i'm talking about is actually this beats it means that in a single bar you cannot have more than three beats if the time signature was three four that's what this simply means now, in time signature, there are what we call simple time signature and compound time signatures as you progress further in the theory of music. But let's look at the simple time signatures. Now, simple time signatures, just like the name sounds, simple. They are just simple. So you have things like this, 2-2. Two, two, right? You have things like 3-2. Two. You have things like 2-4. Uh, you have things like 3-4. And then maybe 4-4. Four, four. Yeah. Okay. These are simple. Now, what makes this simple? It's the supposed numerator. These are simple numbers because this could become greater numbers still retaining this supposed denominator. These are simple numbers. And this simply means this one, two meaning bits in the bar. Remember that the value of meaning I just wrote down is half. And this two for meaning is the two in the supposed denominator as well. So two meaning bits in the bar, three meaning bits in the bar, two crochet bits in the bar, three crochet bits in the bar, four crochet bits in the bar, right? Now let's look at this on the stave. Okay, if this was a stave, this is three crochet bits in a bar. What this is saying is that in a single bar, you cannot have more than three bits because the bit for crochet is one. So three of that, that means in a bar, no more than three. So if I have a note like this, I have another one like this. How do you think I'll bar this? I bar this one already. This is one, this is two, making three. This is three already. If you remember our dotted notes, when we talked about dotted notes, this is two bits plus half of the two bits, which is three. So I'll bar this here. And this is one, two, three, finally one, two, three. And that's another three bits. So this is three, this is three, and this is three. So each bar cannot exceed three bits. That's the point. Now let's see what compound will look like. A compound time signature is just a multiple of the simple time signature. So you can have 
things like this. If this were multiplied by 2, for example, you have something like this, 4, 2. If this were multiplied by 2, you have something like this, 6, 2, right? If this were multiplied by 2, you have something like 4, 4, which is already a game. It's still a simple. So let's take 3, 4. If you multiply this by 2, you have 6, 4, and so on and so forth. So this now becomes a compound. And because I said multiply this by 2, this is a duple. A duple. And if I multiply this by 3, again I will have 6, 2. I can have 9, 2. Right? I can have again 6, 4. 3 times 2, 6, 4, here. Yeah. 3 times 3 here, yeah, I can have 9, 4, and so on and so forth. Now this becomes a true pool. And then if I multiply this by 4, multiply this by 4, I have 8. Multiply this by 4, I have 12. Multiply 2 by... Multiply 4 by 2, I have 8 again. Multiply this, I have 12. Yeah? So if you see compound time signatures like this, having supposed numerators as 12, please know that it's a quadruple. It's a quadruple. And if you see time signatures having 9 on the top, know that it's a triple. And things like 4, maybe not 4 because 4 is also a symbol, or 6, a common example is a duple yeah so i'll give you a breakdown of what everything looks like both simple and compound so for simple you can have duple triple and quadruple and at the same time for compound you can have the duple triple and quadruple and examples of simple duple triple quadruple and compound duple triple quadruple i'll give you the examples now so for simple duple you have things like two four this you can have three four this you can have four four this you can have six four here you can have nine four here you can have twelve four you can have twelve eight as well you can have nine two you can have six six eight yeah it's possible and here you can have uh, three two here you can have two two now what makes up for whether it's duple triple or quadruple is again this supposed numerator you can see duple is like two 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 triple is like three three quadruple is a like four and if you multiply each of this one by factor say three multiply this by three you have six four like that or six eight you can have two eight as, as well it depends on the kind of music you're writing as a composer right you can have nine four for the triple and twelve eight for the quadruple or twelve four so basically this is just a breakdown of time signatures simple and compound time signatures I really wish that you understood what I just explained the beautiful thing is you can always pause this video and always take it back, play it again over and over and understand clearly what I'm saying here. Until next time when we meet, as always, keep learning.